Father in heaven, Lord, we acknowledge your presence and your sovereignty in this place. And we declare, dear Father, that we are nothing apart from you. We continue, Father Lord, to give thanks for your faithfulness, O Lord, that you keep on working in each one of us. You keep on teaching us. You're never tired of lifting us up whenever we fall down. And thank you, Lord, that your grace is sufficient, that you keep us moving. And today, as we listen to your word, dear Father, may you reveal to us your presence and even enable us, Lord, to receive our portion, that we may live in accordance to your will, in accordance to your word, and that we may be a living testimony of who you are, and that we may be a blessing to everyone. We thank you, Lord. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Colossians 3, 1 to 4, pulls back the curtain on realities that are unbelievable except by the miracle of God's Spirit. Realities that you cannot know from any other source than the Bible. Realities that are so astounding that if you see them for what they really are, you will be radically, pervasively different from people who have not seen and do not believe in this reality. In Colossians 3, 1 to 4 calls us to have a new kind of mindset or disposition that accords with this outstanding, outstanding reality. And it points us to the pathway into that mindset and that launches us onto the path of obedience that flows from it in Colossians 3 to 5 and in Colossians 4 to 6. If then you have raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. That's Colossians 3, 1-4. Now, let's focus on the astounding realities that God reveals in Colossians 3, 1-4. That at least five of them. And then, briefly on the mindset that conforms to these realities. And finally, on the pathway on which we pursue that mindset. Number one is God himself. The first and most foundational is the reality of God. Colossians 3, 1b, it says, Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. And in Colossians 3.3, 3, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Without the objective, external, self-existent reality of God, nothing in these verses is real. It is all religious make-believe. And we should be aware that in Paul's day and in our day, many religious people in churches make their living by playing make by playing religious make-believe. Life is vastly more complicated than the simple division between theists and atheists. Thousands of theists don't believe in God. They believe in the idea of God. They believe in the power of myth. And the God myth is the most powerful of all. Paul says in verse 1 that Christ is at the right hand of God. And in verse 3, that your life is hidden with Christ in God. He does not mean that Christ is at the right hand of an idea or that your life is hidden at, with Christ in an idea. The God of Colossians 3 in the same, is the same God as in chapter 1, Colossians. He is the creator of all things. He was there before anyone had any idea of whether he was there. He is the creator of all human minds, including those who imagine that he does not exist as any objective reality outside our thoughts. He is an eternal, uncreated image of himself, his son, in whom is the fullness of deity, and by his son, he holds all things existence. He loves his son infinitely, and he sent him into the world to bear the punishment for all the sins of his people. He is not an imaginary creation of the world. The world is the creation of God, 
and it is not imaginary. Colossians 3, 1 to 4 pulls back the curtain and does all of scripture and on the most fundamental reality of God. And the most fundamental reality of all is God. Number two is Christ at God's right hand. Now the second reality revealed in these verses is Christ seated at the right hand of God. That's in Colossians 3, 1b. Seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. This is the eternal love son referred to in Colossians 1.13. Once he was dead, now he is alive because God raised him from the dead. Three positional things are said in Colossians 3.1 about this eternal son of God and Christ with the Messiah who entered history, died, and rose again. One is he is above. Second, he is at the right hand. And the third is that he is seated. On the third reality presented in Colossians 3, 1 to 4 is death left behind. The third reality Paul unveils that is that as a believer of Christ, your death is behind you. It has already happened. And your life is not what the world thinks it is. It is hidden from the world indeed hidden from you and with with Christ in God Colossians 3:3 3, 3, it says you have died the worst is behind you no matter how much you have to suffer Colossians 3:1a you have been raised with Christ and in Colossians 3b your life is hidden with Christ in God now the reason i said that these realities are true to you if you are a believer of Christ, is because of this phrase in Colossians 2.12, which says, You have been buried with him in baptism, which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. Now, baptism signifies by immersion in water and the coming up out of water that we died and were buried and rose with Christ. And, Mo and Paul makes explicit that the eternal instrument of the spirit that united us to Christ in reality was faith. Through faith, in the powerful working of God, we died and rose with Christ. This is one of the greatest realities in the universe, that you have passed from death to life. That is in, one, in 1 John 3.14. Your most terrible experience of death is behind you. And your most glorious experience of life awaits you. No matter how, how horrible the suffering and the death that awaits us, it is as nothing compared to, why, to what lies behind us. And no matter how ecstatic the life of this world proves to be for, for us, it is as nothing compared to what is hidden with Christ in God at whose right hand are pleasures forevermore. That is Psalm 16, 11. Getting a hold of this reality and being held by it is utterly crucial for survival as a Christian and our thriving in ministry to others. Two great glories, the past and future. Bracket and hold up. All the pain and frustrations and ambiguities and uncertainties of this life. Behind us is the glory that our death is past. The worst is over. It happened on Good Friday. right? Above us and before us is the glory that our life is absolutely secure with Christ in God and will someday be manifested in glory. But in heaven, but in between, where we live is profound hiddenness. That's in Colossians 3b. It says, your life is hidden. The glory is hidden. Your death with Christ is hidden. Your resurrection is hidden. The true you, your, la your true life that will be so much more glorious than your present life that you will, that you will say, this, is, this life is the world, was scarcely life at all compared to my life that was hidden for me in God. This glorious life is hidden for now. We walk by faith and not by sight.
That's in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. To be sure, faith has its kind of saying, but it does not yet replace hiddenness. The fourth is, Christ will appear. That's the fourth reality presented in this verse, that Christ will appear. The fourth reality, that's in Colossians 3, 4, it says, When Christ, who is your life, appears. Christ is here now. He is right now reigning over the world. You can't lift your finger apart from Jesus. He is here. How, but oh, how hidden is the presence and power of Jesus Christ. And Paul is saying in verse 4, it will not always be so. The hiddenness will come to an end. And all those who thought all that matters is our ideas of God. And all that matters is the power and the pleasures of imagination. All those will cry out for the mountains and the rocks to fall on them, to hide them, to make them hidden from the appearing of the glory of the great God and Savior Christ Jesus. That's in Titus 2.13. He is coming. He will appear. All the hiddenness of his presence and his power will be over forever. The fifth is the hidden but soon revealed. The fifth reality is that hiddenness will be over as well. You will appear with him in glory. Again, that's in Colossians 3, 4. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. To be sure, Jesus said that we should let out light shine now so that others can see our good deeds and give glory to our Father in heaven. That's in Matthew 5, 16. But no one did more good deeds, more glorious deeds, more God-revealing deeds of love than Jesus. And only a handful of people glorified God because, Jesus, because of Jesus in his lifetime. They killed him. We should expect no better. Think it not strange when fiery ordeal comes upon you. That's in 1 Peter 4.12. Meaning, we'll be experiencing the same as with Jesus. That is what Peter says in 1 Peter 4.12. Think of it not strange when the fiery ordeal comes upon you. It's not, stra it's not strange. It's part of the hiddenness of your glory. So yes, let us seek to reflect glory of God now. We must, but what a defeated and hopeless life we would live if we thought, if we are to thought, this is my life. This measure of holiness, this measure of purity, this measure of Godwardness, this measure of joy, this measure of glory, this is the real me. No. This is not the real you. When Christ, who is your life, the creator of your life, the sustainer of your life, and the redeemer of your life, and the pattern of your life, and the treasure of your life, when he appears, then and only then will it appear who you really are. For you will shine like the sun when you appear with him in glory. That's in Matthew 13.43. Now, this will be now our new mindset. Those are the realities that Paul reveals in Colossians 3, 1 to 4. Then he calls for us to have a mindset, a disposition, a temperament that conforms to these realities. Colossians 2, 3, set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Now, I believe that Paul means by the things that are above, are the five realities we tried to describe. And the things that are on the earth are any ideas or behaviors in this world not rooted in the shape by these realities. But here's the problem with translating Paul's language. Like, set your minds on, that is in verse 2. You can set your mind on something and disagree with it. You can set your mind on something and you dislike it. But that's not what Paul means by the command. 
This is exactly the word he uses in Philippians 2.5, which is translated, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have this mindset, this attitude, this disposition, this temperament, this way of thinking and feeling, responding to Christ, that Christ had. That's the idea here. Paul is saying, be shaped in your way of thinking. Your emotional life, your pattern of attitudes and responses, your preferences in people and entertainment and clothes and jobs and everything. In this total set of your mind and heart, be formed by the realities that are above. The realities of God and Christ seated at the right hand of God and your true life hidden with Christ in God. And your death behind you, and the spectacular public appearance of Christ, and you appearing with Him in glory. Now let your way of seeing the world, thinking about the world, feeling about the world, be shaped and governed by the realities of above. Finally, Paul points us to the pathway that leads to that mindset. Colossians 3.1 If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Seek, this is the pathway to the mindset shaped by the things above. Seek them. Pursue them. Chase them. Track them down. Size them. Hold on to them. Gaze at them. Dig into them. Understand them. Savor them. Treasure them. This is not passive. No one gains the mindset of heavenly, of heaven things passively. You seek it or you don't have it. But beware, the only seeking of life hidden with Christ in God is the seeking by those whose life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians 3.3, you have died. Colossians 3.1, you have been raised. You are not seeking this death that's behind you. You are not seeking this resurrection that's behind you. You have died. You have raised. That's the basis of our seeking, not the object of our seeking. This is the very essence of, Christ, of Christian effort. We seek and crave and pursue the realities that are above because we are, we belong there. We belong in above. So let me say again, the pathway to the mindset that is shaped by the realities that are above is relentless, passionate seeking. Seek the realities that are above. They are found in the world. No, they are found in the word of God. Colossians 3 and all the scriptures. Seek them. Don't be passive. Seek them, find them, meditate them, treasure them. Enter your whole way of thinking and feeling and, res and responding and acting is shaped by them. This is then the encouragement of Paul that we should seek things that belongs to what is above, to what is belonging to God, that is belonging above. He uses the word above. So in our daily living, in our day-to-day -day living, we should seek of those things and try to meditate. Are these things belonging above? Is this belong are, are these things pleasing before the Lord? Sometimes we tend to experience and we make decisions that is difficult. And we don't know, we think, is this the will of God? If you, are, if you find difficulty in deciding these things, if this is the will of God, consider this criteria. Is these things belonging to God? Will this glorify the Lord? Will this magnify the Lord if I do this? Because first and foremost, we do not belong in this world. Everything will come to pass. But the word of the Lord will remain. And Paul highlights here to focus on things that are above. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you. Because we believe, Father Lord, that it is not our own understanding that will cause us to understand your word. But it is your Holy Spirit, dear Father, that will move in each of our heart, each of our minds, O Lord, to understand the very words that you want us to understand. 
And thank you, dear Father, Lord, because we are not for this world. We belong to you. We are just foreigners of this world. We do not belong in here. And in your perfect time, we will be, ex will be experiencing, we will be enjoying the life that you promised together with you in heaven. And thank you, Lord, for the assurance that though we experience a lot of persecutions, a lot of accusations because of our faith in you here in this world, the guarantee is that we will be, we will be having this life in heaven. Indeed, you've experienced a lot in this world. You know what is in this world. And we thank you that you continue to provide the strength, you continue to provide the favor, the grace that we need that we may be sustained in this life. We acknowledge your goodness, your faithfulness, and we will be excited, dear Father, of the things that are to come that you planned since the very beginning. We honor you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.